el P550-2. Gallardo, longitude postario, however that, that sounded very sexual, but that's not what I meant. Uh, meaning longitude positioned engine. And that's a port of It's funny how life is. Last week I'm driving a Mazda 6, pushing 38 MPG. Today I'm going around corners pushing 10. In 2014 is going to be a big year in Sant'Agata Bolognese. Lamborghini is replacing its entry-level model, if you could call it that. Now I'd love to be able to tell you the name, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Suffice to say, it's named after a bull, one that did the fighting circuit and prevailed. So much so, he was awarded to live out the rest of his days in the pastures of the Italian countryside. Now there are three things that are important about this new car. Number one, more power, 610 horsepower to be exact. Number two, all the learning that Lamborghini took in the Aventador, specifically composites and carbon fiber, are going to be applied to this new car. So the new car is actually going to be a lower curb weight than the car it replaces. And number three, and most important, this car is going to be fitted with carbon ceramic brakes as standard. People, this is huge. This is as big to this segment as airbags were to family cars in 1986. That being said, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you came from? So we have to look at one more fact, and that's a number, 14,022. That's how many Gallardos Lamborghini produced over a 10 year period. Now, if you're a Lamborghini aficionado or even a passing car guy, you already know this. So we really need to put this number into perspective. This is coming from a company that sold in 2011 in its largest export market, the US, 340 cars. 2012, they sold 480. And barring the economy falling off a cliff again, in 2013, Lamborghini's on track to sell over 500. So with that, me and Gene and I felt it only fitting to give a proper send-off to the car that literally transformed Lamborghini. This is the Gallardo V10 550 horsepower engine, longitudinally mounted, which distributes the weight much more evenly within the wheelbase. Now this engine is stunningly beautiful. And the bottom end of this is the most beautiful bottom end I've ever seen on an engine. Now you remember the old Alfa Romeos where they had those wonderful intake manifolds on the top? Well, the bottom of this is prettier. So I've been honest with you guys, right? I mean, I've told you right from the start, I am a Lotus guy. I like understated cars. I like light. I like going around corners. But this car, you're literally at the top of Macho Mountain when you drive this car. And it's not because of what it has, it's because of what it doesn't have. This is an exercise of less is more, meaning you don't get all-wheel drive. That's what this car is. The two jaws in the LP550 is two-wheel drive. Now here's why less is more. Instead we're going around a corner like this one right now, declining radius I'd like to point out. You tell the car, I want to go this way. We're going to do it right now. I want to go this way. The car says, yeah, I pretty much can do that. And then we got a turn coming up here, but this time I want to go this way. Car, go this way. So you go like this and the car's like, yeah, I got you back. But then you don't quite trust it, so you try it again. This time we go much bigger sweeper. And the car says, haven't I we discussed this? I got you back. So really, the two means, yo, I got your back. V10, dual overhead camshafts, four valves per cylinder, variable valve timing, 550 horsepower, 398 foot-pounds of torque. There's only one problem. I can't see it. Okay, let's talk about the transmission a little bit. There should be a stick here. This suit that's missing, it, there should be something here that has like maybe a white knob that has one, two, three, four, five, maybe even seven positions. Move it here. There's like a, I'm looking for more engagement here. That's the, if I'm really looking for something wrong with this car, that's what I'm missing. And believe me, I know all this stuff. Well, if we were to offer that transmission, we have to crash test the car in your country, and that's a lot of money, and really only four people, 4.2 people are gonna buy that car for the calendar year 2013. Well, people, 
there are times in life you just got to step up. And if you're going to step up and make a two-wheel drive car, let's go all the way and get the shift. Shall we? My first car was a 49 Mercury, you know, the James Dean Rebel Without a Cause car. And it had 15-inch wheels on it. Now here it is, a little over 60 years later, and the front brake rotors on this Lamborghini are also 15 inches. And for around the same price as a Volkswagen GTI, you can upgrade those rotors to carbon ceramic. Now the caliper is a Brembo aluminum caliper with not four pistons, not six pistons, but eight. I am really kind of surprised how light this car drives. I did expect it to be somewhat heavy and unruly to go around corners, but that is not the case at all. I, the wheelbase really is very short, and that has a lot to do with really how nimble this car is. And that's the, it, it is downright nimble. I wouldn't say it's quite an Elise, but it's not a big, heavy supercar that you think it is. This is the engine compartment cover, and it doubles as a tonneau cover for the convertible top. Now, up until this year, this was the single largest piece of carbon fiber on any automobile in the world. But now it's been replaced with the clamshell hood of the Viper, which is the new largest single piece of carbon fiber on an automobile. What's this world coming to when a bull gets pushed around by a snake? We've looked at Lamborghini's future, but what about its past? If you couldn't tell by now, me and Gene and I are quite enamored of the concept of a two-wheel drive Lamborghini. So we just had to sample one of the company's historic models. Where better to do this than on a Concours in Beverly Hills at the former estate of one of the early pioneers of the U.S. oil industry. Our mission was simple. Find at least one owner that would let us drive his beloved car. Mean Gene and I divided and conquered. At first, I did find an Italian two-wheel drive car, but this one was a hybrid of sorts. Then I found another one, but this one was manufactured by an accessory company. Then I finally found another two-wheel drive car, but it really was only Italian in name. It was at that point that I regrouped with Mean Gene, only to find his luck wasn't much better. Of course, he started out with his damn British cars. Then when I finally focused him on the continent, he picked the wrong country. Then he finally landed on some car he was enamored with, but sadly, this one was built before Ferrucci himself was even born. And this is where our story takes a bit of a sad turn. We felt utterly defeated because we were at a classic car show where there wasn't a single classic car from one of the most storied car manufacturers in the world from one of the most important car producing nations in the world. But hey, you know me, Gene and I, we're survivors. When in Rome, there was the Romans. The rotor is mounted on the spindle, and the spindle is attached to the upper and lower control arms. Now the interesting thing here is that the front shock absorber is mounted on the upper control arm. The first time I saw this was on an early Thunderbird. <laughs> uh, believe me, there's no comparison. But the interesting thing with this shock being mounted on the upper control arm, the upper control arm can be made narrower than it normally would be and this allows the front wheel and tire to be turned deeper into it on cornering, and that contributes to the excellent handling characteristics of this automobile. And there's something else. Because of the absence of the shock absorber going from the lower control arm up through the upper control arm, that allows the anti-sway bar to be more directly routed to where it links up with the lower control arm and that gives the anti-sway bar more control over the pitch and the yaw of the front suspension. While we're looking at the shock absorber, you'll notice a hydraulic line coming into the base of it, and that's from the height control system. These people anticipated Moto Man ripping the bottom of the air dam off going up and down driveways, so they've put this system in to raise the front end an inch and a half, and also anticipating Moto Man forgetting to lower it again the car automatically lowers itself back down when it reaches a speed of 25 miles an hour. A note about the color. You can't get something understated like this, a black on black with black wheels. It just, it's almost kind of lost. But a Lamborghini, it's, it really is the only car where it's, it's kind of compulsory for you to get 
crazy blood orange or neon burst yellow, something like that. I mean, every other car, after you buy something in that color, two weeks later, you're gonna go into your garage and say, what the hell did I do? But a Lamborghini, Lamborghini, it, just, it needs that. It, and, and it needs that contrast. You need the, the crazy color on the outside and maybe like a black on the inside. I've even seen a very cool blue, like a, an understated blue with tan seats and silver wheels. Man, that's a stunner in this car. But who cares if it's black if it sounds like that? It would stand to reason that someone that owns a Lamborghini probably has everything they want. What would you give somebody who already has everything they want? White gloves. What else would you change a spare tire with? Oh, Santa Maria Madre de Dios. It's just, dude, it's the sound. I mean, come on. I don't care how fast the car is or what it looks like. Just listen to that. I mean, who needs a woman when you got that? You have to deal with her mother. I would argue that the beauty and elegance of the aluminum control arms at the front and the rear of this automobile rivals the beauty and the elegance of the interior of this automobile. And it's a graphic example that you do get what you pay for, even if you can't see it. So those of you following me on Twitter got a very profound life lesson a couple of days ago. And oh, by the way, all of you should be following me on Twitter. Motoman TV, and that's spelled all one word. Motoman TV. Anyway, the life lesson came courtesy of this vehicle. I'm driving down Playa, looking at the beach in the Lamborghini, and I think like a Monday. A Monday. At the beach, in a Lamborghini. And it dawned on me, if one is focusing their life on the weekends, you know, going out, ripping it up with your friends, getting drunk, whatever it is, your weekdays are never gonna look like this. Going into this, we were presented with a bit of a question. Does lopping off the front drive wheels improve the breed? But really what we have here is an automotive trend. And to explain that, we need to translate to a language you and I already know, 911. Carrera 4, Carrera 4S, Turbo, alles wunderbar. But when you drop the all-wheel drive system and ditch the turbos, the transformation to the GT3 ist sauber. But it's still not the biggest, baddest 911 out there. But it is the one you want. The one you want to take to track days and the one you want to go carve canyons with. Now, back to La Storico Marchio Sant'Agata Bolognese. The transformation is just as magia. Ma con una stile italiano. Hey, you guys, I found one. Hey, somebody give me a wrench and I'll fix it. Okay, so here's the script. For a new Motoman film every week, click subscribe. And to get a sneak peek of what's coming up on the show, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Motoman TV, all one word.